Hi everyone, good night and welcome to Kemet Masai Academy. We are on a roll and we are going through some past paper questions for the grade five performance task. This evening, we are going to look at a science past paper question. Um, for the rest of this week into next, we're only doing performance tasks. We have been doing that for the entire month of March, focusing on the performance task. And we've, we've combed through the grade four PEP questions, grade five PEP, grade six PEP. So we want to make sure that everybody who is doing the PEP um, performance tasks are ready and very well prepared to do so. All right, now this evening we're looking at a science paper. I'm going to invite my scholars who are waiting backstage to join me as usual. Good night, Miss. Good night. Welcome, Nordine, Good night, Miss. Amari, Abriel, Jair. Welcome, guys. Who loves science? Miss, I do, kind of. Kind of? Me too, Miss. Is it one of your favorites? Miss, I don't like it, but I have to do it. Oh, you have to do it, so. Mrs. A girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. Miss, hmm? yes, was Who was speaking? Abriel? Don't miss it. Miss, I like a specific type of science, though, Miss. What's that? Miss space science and weather science. I think. Oh, I love space science. What's the name of space science? <laughs> miss, I, don't, I only know that the, I only know that the weather is meteorology. That's all I know. So the one for the weather is meteorology, and space is astronomy. I've always loved astronomy since I was a little tiny tot. Always loved gazing up at the stars and wondering what. Well, the science that we're going to be doing in this performance task is a, is a, is a little more down to earth. We'll be looking at organisms. We'll be joining a grade five class, going out and doing some experiments and observations with organisms. So let's see, let's share the screen so we can have a look at the paper. All right, so it's the June 2022 performance task in science for grade five. All right, um, Genesis, can you read the general instructions, please? General instructions. This task is, has three parts, part one, part two, and part three. Read the instructions in each part carefully. Use the information provided to answer all questions in each part. Instruct, instruct, instructions to begin. Carefully read the instruct, instructions to the task, then introduction to the task, then move, move on. on to the answers, answer each task. Each question. General instruction. Oh. This takes task. This task has three parts: part one, part two, and part three. Read the information in each part carefully. Use the information provided to answer all parts in each. All questions. Part. All questions in each part. Instructions to begin. Carefully read the 
So, introduction to task, it is about a pond project. What is a pond? What's a pond? Miss, take a smaller version of a lake, miss. Okay, yeah. That's a good way to put it. A small version of a lake. Miss, a small water body. Small water body. Okay. This is a small area of fresh water. Yes. All of those could apply to a pond. All right. So we're going to see what's up with this pond project. Um, Nordica. A group of grade five students was asked to be a part of their school's pond project. The students were asked to observe the school's pond for, for four months, January to April, and collect data on the Living Things data. The students were asked to complete the following task. Name the organism they saw in the pond and make notes on what each organism ate. Create two food chains to show what each organism ate. Investigate how organisms in and around the pond could be affected by each other and their environment. Record and explain changes in the population size of two organisms over over the four months. A group of grade five students was asked to be a part of their school's pond project. The students were asked to observe the school's pond for four months. January to April and collect data on the living things they saw. The students were asked to complete the following task. Name the organism they saw in the pond and make notes on what each organism ate. Create two food chains to show what each organism ate. Investigate how organism in and around the pod could be affected by each other and their environment. Record and explain changes in the population size of two organisms over the four months. All right, so this is loaded with information, right? So we have some grade five students. They are going to be observing their, the pond. The pond is located near the school. For four months, they will observe for four months. Collect data. What is data? Miss, a source of information. Okay, data is the actual information. Right? Information. Yeah, the data is the actual information that you collect. All right, and then the students will do several tasks. They are going to first try to name the organisms that they have observed um, and what they ate. They are also going to, to create two different food chains. So the food chain shows the flow of energy between organisms depending on who eats what. And we use arrows to show the flow. The food chain usually begins with what? Miss the producer, miss. The producer, which is? What kind of organism is the producer? A plant has to be a plant. 
plants are the producers. They make their own food. But actually, the but food Ms. chain should begin with the sunlight, right? Um, technically speaking, it really should begin with the sunlight, or you should at least be aware that it's the sun Ms. providing the energy to drive the food chain. Yes? Miss, the sun is the main source. The main source Mr. of energy. Right. Yes. But if the sun, if the sunlight isn't there, um, or you know, try to try to put it, but if it's not being considered, at least knowing in your mind, the sunlight is the main driver of the food chain. But other than the sunlight, the food chain should start with a plant, a producer, because plants are the ones that make their own food in photosynthesis, and then the consumers um, either eat the plants directly or indirectly by eating other consumers that eat plants. Miss? Yes? Miss, between a bird and a mongoose, Mr. Bird would be the producer and the mangoes would be the consumer no, no no they are both consumers neither of them is a producer no animal is a producer but miss doesn't the mangoes eat the bird miss? yes but the man they are both consumers they have different levels of consumers primary secondary tertiary depending on um how complex their diet is so the one, the herbivores will be the primary consumers. They eat only the producers. And as we go up the chain, it becomes more complex in terms of what the consumers eat. So some might eat both um, herbivores and carnivores. So it gets kind of complicated the higher up you go. Um, but the plants start it, or technically speaking, the sun starts it all. The plants use the sunlight to make food. The herbivores eat the plants. The carnivores eat the herbivores, and so on. The omnivores, I will go up the chain to the, 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 um, the predators at the, the top of the food chain, usually at the top of the food chain, are the carnivores usually or, or omnivores all right so let's see now abriel part one please yes miss. part one the observation two pages from a grade five student's notebook are shown below the student's name is Marsha. The pages show the pages show the notes she made while observing the pond over the four month period. The page on the left shows the names of the organisms Marsha was able to identify. The page on the right shows what each organism ate. Examine the pages from Marshall's notebook, then use them to answer questions one, two, and three. Encore. Encore, you know what encore means? Go again, please. Part one, the observation. Two pages from a grade five student's notebook are shown below. The student's name, the, the student's name is Marsha. The pages show the notes she made while observing the pattern over the four month period. The page on the left, shows the names of the organisms Marsha was able to identify. The 
page on the right shows what each organism ate. Examine the pages from Marsha's notebook, then use them to answer questions one, two, and three. Thank you, Abriel. May it come on? Yes. And on car means a call by audience for additional performance, the item that's called the answer to call. Thank you, Jaya. Read it again, please. Call by audience for additional performance, the item that answers the call. Thank you. So whenever you make a performance or you say something or you do anything and somebody says encore, especially if they're giving you an applause, encore means again, again, we want it again, we want it again, we love it. All right. Um, so Jair, I want you to read Marsha's notebook, the two pages from Marsha's notebook, please. Okay, miss. Location, school pond, date, April 29, 2021. Topic, food chain. Names of organisms. The organisms that were seen and around the school pond include snails, small fish, water beetles, pond, pond grass, pond weed, chicken hawk, frogs, turtles, large fish, sna snakes, and garlic. Location, school pond, dates, April 29, 2021, food chain. Notes on what each organism ate. Small fish, snails, and water beetles ate pond grass and pond weed. Frogs and frogs and turtles ate small fish, snails, and water beetles. Large fish eat small fish. Snails, snakes eat frogs and small fish. Garlin and chicken hawk eat large fish turtles, snakes, and frogs. Okay. Oh, Location, okay. school pond, date April 29, 2021. Topic, food chain. Names of organisms. The organism that took were seen in and around the school pond include snails, small fish, Small water beetles, pond grass, pond weed, chicken park, frogs, turtles, large fish, snakes, and garlic. Location school pond. Date April 29, 2021. Topic food chain. Note on what each organism eats. Small fish, snails, and water beetles eat pond grass and the pond weed. Frogs and turtles eat small fish, snails, and water beetles. Large fish eat small fish. Snakes and frogs eat small fish. Garlin and chicken hawk eat large fish, turtles, snakes, and frogs. Okay, thank you, Jair. So Marsha was very meticulous in her notes. She wrote down everything that she observed, all the animals that she saw, and also what they ate. And we noticed that some animals ate more than one thing whereas some animals only ate one particular thing. And that's how it is in nature. You might have an animal, they only eat this particular plant, or they only eat this particular insect, or they only eat this particular bird. 
and then you'll have some animals that they eat. Even if they're, they are strictly herbivores, they might eat several varieties of plants or fruits. Some animals might eat several varieties of different animals. So it's, it, it, it all depends on the organism. Amari? Yes, please. Please read. Okay, miss. Marsha and her group members were asked to create two food chains. The diagram below shows one of the food chains they created. Use it to answer question one. Pond grass, snail, frog, garland. Number one, use the food chain to identify one producer and one consumer. Ma Marsha and her group members were asked to create two food chains. The diagram below shows one of the food chains they created. Use it to answer questions one. Pond grass, snail, frog, garland. Number one, use the food chain to identify one producer and one consumer. All right, so what did we say a producer was? Miss a plant. Typically a plant. So it's the organism that produces its own food, usually by photosynthesis. So what's who, what is the producer here? Pond grass, miss. The pond grass. All right. And what is a consumer? Miss a consumer, miss snail, miss. No, define the consumer for me. Oh, Mr. Consumer, is the, Miss is the thing that eats, eats the, con, the producer, Miss. Or another consumer. So the consumer um, eats another organism in order to get its energy. We have different levels of consumers. We have the primary consumers. Who tip who generally eat the producers. And we have the secondary consumers who consume the primary consumers, tertiary consumers, and so on. It, it, it generally in nature is not as simple as a chain, just a chain. It's more usually a web, a food web, where you have different branches going out, right? From each organism might be eaten. Um, by different organisms and they in turn eaten by different organisms. So there's a big network, which is more like a web than a chain. Um, so tell me a consumer. They just want one consumer, but we Which actually have three. So the snail consumes the pond grass. But the other two are consumers as well, right? So if you name the frog, or if you name the garland for the consumer, you would be correct also. All right, Genesis. Miss Jensen got kicked off. Oh, Genesis is getting kicked off so often. Something wrong with her, her device? Genesis? No. Genesis, are you there? Yes, please. All right, please read for me. Help Marsha and her group members by creating the second food chain in the space provided below. Two, use the information in Mar Marsha's book, notebook, to create the second food chain. The food chain should have more than three organisms. Do you do not use any of the organisms used in the first food chain? All right, this is important. Uh, Sorry, go, go again, Genesis. Help Marsha and her group members to create the second food chain in the space below. 
to use the information in Marshall's notebook to create this second food chain. The food chain should have more than three organisms. Do not use any of the organisms used in the first food chain. All right. So we are to make a second food chain, but we should not use any of the organisms used in this food chain here. So there are only two producers from the from Marsha's list that I remember. And here they're using the pond grass. So that means we have to use which one? Because we can't use the pond grass. Chicken pond pond right? So we have to start our food chain with the pond weed. And then what are we going to put as the primary consumer that eats the pond weed? Because Miss they have they have snails, so we can use snail again. Miss, so can, you, Miss can you go back and do something? Sit here. Miss, you could use the water beetle, the small thing. Yeah, we could use a water beetle or and the small fish. Small fish. Small fish. Miss. No, no, no. What eats the pond weed? Oh yes, 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 yes. Um, yes, yes, yes. I'm the one not seen for. So we could use either the small fish or the water beetle. Um, which, which one you want to use? Miss, so, miss water the small beetle. fish. Uh -huh. oh, this is a water All right, so we start. What well, we say? We start in with the pawn weed, pawn weed, because they use the they they um. Let me go back, cause I lose track. Wait, then. they used pawn weed, the snail, frog, and calling All right, so we are using the pawn weed. And then we say water one, beef. The water, water beef. All right. And then now who is gonna eat the water beetle? Remember, it said we must have more Miss than three. Miss. Yeah, it has to have more than three. This is terrible handwriting. I do not write like this, okay? Normally. I have pretty, pretty handwriting. All right. So after, so the water beetle, we're gonna make who they have for who they have for their. They have frog in their third line. So maybe we we'll use snake, please. So who we'll eat the water beetle? We're gonna use oh turtles, miss turtle, right? Miss turtles, miss yeah, turtles. Then after snake, miss. Huh? Wait, no, no, no. Who eats a Miss turtle? Miss Turtle then chicken, chicken hawk. So for the turtle, you can put the gall in or the Miss you can't put the gall in. Do they have gall in? It's in the thing already. Oh, yes, they have gall in. So we're going to put um turtle and chicken, chicken hawk, right? Is that what we said? That's what yes, we said? Yes, yes, Miss. Yes, all right, so after the water beetle, we're going to put the turtle because we're making sure, remember, I know we were told, make sure not to use anything that they used. So that's why we have to be double checking. So after the turtle, now, finally, we're going to put the chicken hawk. All right, so this is our food chain. The pond weed is the producer, um, makes its own food. It is eaten by the water beetle. Um, the water beetle in turn is eaten by the turtle and the turtle in turn is eaten by the chicken hawk. If we were to extend this, is there anything that we could put after chicken hawk? 
What could eat a chicken? With mangoes, miss. Mangoes, yeah. Or or some bigger bird birds of prey. Yeah, some bigger birds of prey that cats, cats, miss cats. Cats eat, yeah. Cats eat. Miss them. Eagle. Eagle. I was thinking of the eagle. Yeah. So Miss that's owl. our owls, yeah. Okay, Miss so bird hawk. You have something named bird hawk? Yes, Miss. Oh, I don't know of the bird hawk. I know a hawk. They call it bird hawk. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So who read last? Genesis? So it's Nardika. Yes, Nardika, no. <clears throat> Identify a predator of the turtle. Read the number, Ex Nardika. Number three. Identify a predator of the turtle. Explain one possible effect that a decrease in the turtle population could have one on could have on this predator justify your explanation using information from marsha's notebook name of turtle predator explain here i number three identify a predator excuse me of the turtle explain one possible effect that a decrease in the turtle population could have on this predator justify your explanation using information from marcia's notebook name of turtles predator explain here who is a predator miss a predator is someone hmm? one person at a time nordica Miss, a predator is someone, no, that's is, is an organism. Someone or an organism, thank you, Miss, that was the word, mm -hmm. who eats other organism like, for instance, a lion eats like snakes and deer and those stuff like that, and those animals are. Right? Okay. And it, it, it seeks out that organism and usually has to hunt it down, right? Sometimes yes, you lay in traps for the organism. Uh, did anybody else want to add to the definition of predator? All right, so we understand what a predator is. And um, what else did I want to add? The, the turtle population, what do I mean by the turtle population? Miss the species of turtle? Just the species? When we talk about the population, is it just to say this is a, a different species? No, no miss the amount of miss the amount of turtles on the earth. Miss the average not amount of earth, turtles not on, the on the earth. Not on the earth. In this particular habitat, which is the pond near to the school. In this particular habitat being studied now, how many turtles? All right, so that's the turtle population. So they're saying, one, we must name one predator of the turtle. So let's go back to the to Marsha's notes. Miss, I know Mr. Snake. Who eats the turtle? Snake. Snake. So it's Miss says, Snake uh, and Miss Garlin. So the Garlin, did it say that the snake eat the turtle? No, Miss, she didn't say that. No, the snake, the snake is not a predator of the turtle. It said the Garlin and the chicken hawk eat the large fish and turtles and snakes is that what i'm seeing yeah the garlin and chicken hawk eat large fish turtles 
snakes and frogs. So we could either write what or what for this. Miss, you could either write chicken hawk or garlin. Right. As a predator of the turtle, we could put the chicken hawk or the garlin. So let's write that. Yes, Miss. Yeah. Miss, you're calling so me. No, I wasn't. So I'm going to put the gall in. But we, they asked for one. So I'm just going to put the gall in. But bear in mind, you could also have put the chicken hog. And what do they want us to explain? Miss, what would happen? Miss, what effect would, um, would be on the gall in if the population of turtles were to decrease until there were no turtles left miss all right so what effect would it have mr mr garland would have a less source of uh, mr Gar no, the garland would have less source of food if the turtles population was to decrease miss okay mm -hmm. and uh, so how you think the garland would react to that miss they would miss they would um focus on different foods miss such as miss such as the large fish the turtles um Not no turtles. sorry large fish snakes and the frogs miss all right and what would happen to the population of those miss they would also decrease okay so if the if the turtles were miss, then, miss, then I, miss if those were to decrease miss then the garlins population would also decrease yes mm -hmm. so it would have a chain effect that's what we call it a chain effect a domino effect where a, a change in one thing causes a, cha a subsequent change in other things so the turtles they eat one of their foods is the turtles they gall in one of their foods is the turtles and if the turtle population was to decrease dramatically the gall in would then turn to eat more fish more large fish more um, snakes more frogs if they didn't do that, then their numbers, the garlings, would, would also decrease. So they would have to find alternate sources of food or, or eat more of their alternate sources of food. So you, you would explain all of that, okay? I am not going to try to write that, but you would explain that. I wish I had um, something that I could write fluently but i don't so you just make sure you, you say that that much in your explanation all right abriel part two miss miss i'm coughing miss you i can't read right now all right okay jair part two miss jair got kicked off you know, I'm not kicking off anybody. You know, I wonder if these people kicking off themselves. Mm -hmm. All right, I see. Um, Purpose Nat is giving us some great definitions over in the chat. Thank you so much for these definitions. Purpose Nat, very good, very good. So a predator. Is an organism that kills and eats other organisms, which is called predation. And predators are usually larger than their prey or overwhelm them. Uh, our predation that eats small rodents. Oh, I think something is missing there. Okay, thank you so much. Right. I don't know. I don't know who's kicking off these scholars, you know. Is is it the scholars kicking themselves off? 
Jair, yeah. are you back? That's nice. How you got bumped off? How you and Genesis getting bumped off? Your device not working properly? No, Miss, I was going to um and mute my mind. Miss, and I pressed the wrong button. Miss. Okay. All right. Can you read what's on the screen, please, Jair? Part two. Testing a hypothesis. 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 At different points near the pond, the grass looked to brown. The group believed that the grass looked brown because it did not receive enough sunlight. The group decided to carry out an investigation to test their hypothesis. To aim and the aim and method for in for the investigation is shown below. Use the information to answer question four. Um, Miss, should I read the book or read it over again? Read it over again, please. What is it, Miss? Read it again, please. To test in a hypothesis. At a different point near the pond, the grass looked brown. The group believed that the grass looked brown because it didn't receive enough sunlight. The group decided to carry out an investigation to test their hypothesis. The aim and method for the investigation is shown below. Use the information to answer question four. All right. So the hypothesis was a hypothesis. Can I get a definition of the word hypothesis, please? Anyone quickly? Miss I found the meaning. All right. A sup a supposition or purpose as explanation made on the basis of a limited evidence as a starting point for further investigation. Again, please. A supposition or purpose ex explanation explanation made on the basis basis of limited evidence as a starting point for further investigation. Investigation. All right. So. It's scientists make hypotheses when they have an idea and they want to test it out. And they're saying, all right, let's see what will happen if we do this. Or we think this might happen, but let us check to see if that's what really is going to happen, right? They're not sure. So the scientific method involves doing experiments to prove or disprove hypotheses. Um, Amari? Yes, miss. Can you read for me, please? Aim. To find out if sunlight is needed in order to keep the grass looking green. Method 1. Get two sheets of plastic, one clear and one black. 2. The clear sheet of plastic and the black sheet of plastic should be of different size. Three, spread each sheet of plastic to cover separate patches of grass for three days. 
four after the three days remove the plastic from each patch and record your observations and to find out if sunlight is needed in order to keep the grass looking green method one get two sheets of plastic one clear and one black two the clear sheet of plastic and the black sheet of plastic should be of different sizes three spread the spread each sheet of plastic of plastic to cover separate patches of grass for three days four after the days after the three days remove the plastic from each patch and record your observations thank you amari all right genesis yes miss please read one of the steps in the method is incorrect. In, mm -hmm. in the special in the space the space provided below, but the correct step uh, so that the investigation will represent represent a fair test one of the steps in the method is incorrect in the space below provided <laughs> below write the correct step so the investigation will rep represent as fair test all right, so one of these steps in the method is incorrect. Which one is it and what should the correct thing be? Miss, I would say that the method that's incorrect is two, where it says the clear sheet of plastic and the black sheet of plastic should be of different sizes. Miss, I think it should be the same size, Miss why miss because um miss one one of them could could um have covered properly but one has um have not covered properly miss what do you mean miss i mean like if you're covering the patches of grass mm -hmm. miss and miss if you have miss and miss if you're making a uh, um observation miss it has to be two of the same things miss if you're doing an experiment yeah. yes miss miss it has to be two of the same things miss why miss because then it wouldn't be a it would be fair this is it a fair test right in order for it to be fair we have to ensure that every um every every specimen or every we have we have the control which we use as like to gauge to see how far from the norm but if we're doing five liters of water all the containers must have five liters of water right if we're putting it at the temperature if we're starting at 27 degrees everybody must start at 27 degrees that's the only way we're going to be able to make a, a fair comparison if every just like when you start in the race everybody must start at the starting line at the same place at the same time so nobody don't get to push off before the others everybody wait for the the, the 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 call to go it's the same thing and and also it's similar to finding the lcm when you're comparing fractions you make sure that there's a common denominator when there is a common denominator then you can compare the numerators so it's similar to that 
when we know that everybody started at the same time or all um the thing the this the things being considered were being regulated at the same um temperature or the same amount or the same number of things added or whatever whatever the case may be then we can make the comparison and see the changes so if we're covering an area of grass we should cover the same area of grass with the clear plastic as with the dark plastic and that would be the common denominator and then we can make the comparison because the size of the area might make a difference to the result. So we have to ensure that the size is the same so that when we're comparing the results, it is fair. It's a fair test. So it's correct. Um, statement two should be what then, Amari? Because they ask us to say, what should it be then instead? Miss? Statement two should be the clear sheet of plastic and black sheet of plastic should be the same size, miss. So it should be of similar same. or same, not similar, same size. So instead of different, so we're going to restate that. This is what you would write in the space provided. You'd rewrite the instruction, but instead of different, you would put same. That's what you'd write in this box here. All right, um, Nordica. Miss Nardika is not on. Nardika? Yes, Miss. Oh. Part three, presenting data. The group of students was asked to record the population size of two ponds organism, organism A and organism B. This was done once each month for four months. Four months. The table below shows the group fi findings. Table showing population size of two pond organisms over four months. Population size. Month January organism A forty five organism B five. Month February organism A forty organism B ten. Month March, organism A35, organism B15. Month April, organism A25, organism B20. Part 3 Presenting data. The group of students was asked to record the population size of two ponds, organism, organism A, and organism B, which was done once each month for four months. The table below shows a group findings. Ta table showing population size of two ponds organism for organism over four months. Population size month January organism A forty five organism B five month February organism A forty organism B ten month March organism A thirty five organism B fifteen. Month April, organism A25, organism B20. Thank you, Nordico. So they want us. Um, so the data in the table was used to create a bar graph shown below. The bar graph is incomplete. Use the table to complete the bar graph for January, February, and March. April was done for you be sure to label each bar. So question 5A, the data in the table was used to create the bar graph shown below. The bar graph is incomplete. Use the table to complete the bar graph for January, February, and March. April was done for you. 
be sure to label each bar. So this bar graph, bar graph showing changes in population size of two pond organisms over four months. That's the title of the bar graph. On the y-axis, we have number of organisms. On the x-axis, we have the four months, January, February, March, April. April has been done for us. And so we're going to put in the information for January, February, and March. So for January, organism A was 45 and organism B was five. So we're going to put that. So January for organism B. January with um, 45 and five. Grades up to 45. Is that 45? Yes, miss. Okay. Yes, miss. A and B is what? Five. B is five. So we're going to put A here. And B in this one. And of course, yours is yours will look neat neater than mine however right much neater for for um february a was 40 and b is 40 and b is 10. all right so we have a is february 40 And B, is and B is 10. 10. So this is B. And this is. For March, A is. This A is 25 and B is 15. Okay, so for March, A goes up to 35. Your lines will not be done in them. And 50. All right, so this is kind of, should look. All of my lines. We started a dancing competition. Yeah, they're dancing. All right, so that's our bar graph that we have completed. All right, Jair, read what they want us to do for this page now. Don't tell me Jair get bumped off again. Is he? No, me. Okay. Go ahead, Jair. The students also use the data in the table to create a line, the line graph shown below. Use the graph to answer question 5b. Line graph showing changes in population size of two ponds. Organism over four months. Number of organisms zero out of zero to fifty January five. No, you don't have to read the information, we can see. Oh, just read from the top again, please. The students also use the data in, tab in the table to create the line graph shown below. Use the graph to answer question 5b. Line graph showing changes in population size of two pond organisms over four months. All right, thank you, Jair. So this time they use a line graph and because it's two different organisms, so they have two different lines, the dotted line represents organism A and the 
unbroken line represents organism B. So we can look at the general pattern for organism A, it's gradually getting less, it's gradually decreasing where, for A, whereas for organism B, it's gradually increasing. Am I correct in saying that? Yes, miss. Yeah. The only difference I see um, with A, it, it gradually decreased and then it got to a point and it, it started decreasing at a faster rate. But still overall, a, a decrease. So what do they want us to do here? We're to describe what happened to the population size of each organism from January to April. So we're to do it for organism A in this box and for organism B in this box. We're to describe what happened in the population size of each organism from January to April. So how would we describe it? We would say for organism A, Miss Houser, organism B, a, Miss organism A, gradually decreases from 45 to 25, Miss. Okay. And, and Miss for organism. The fact that when it got to uh, March, there was even a sharper decrease, right? Yes, Miss. Yes. How and Miss for organism, organism B, organism B yes, yeah. I would say. It gradually, organism B gradually increases from five to 20. Mm -hmm. Over the course of four months. Yes, yes. All right, so. All right, um, Genesis. Yes, Miss. The final slide is yours, Madam. Use the land graph to answer question six. After ab ab observing, observing how observing how the population of Organism A and organism B change from January to April. As a student had the following statement. Statement. Organism A is a organism B. Organism B is a predator a predator uh, and it feeds of feeds on organism a do you agree with the statement use using infor using information from the line graph Give one reason to support your answer. Use the line graph to answer question six. After observing, observing, observing how the population of organism A and organism B change change from January to April and a student students may, and students made the following statements statements organism, organism B is a predator at and it feeds off organism A six do you agree with the statement 
Using information from the line graph give one reason to support your answer. Do you agree with this statement? Miss, I would miss, yes, I agree, miss. Miss, because Miss Light, Miss Light, we did in the first question, Miss will say that if most likely if the animal is decreased if the animal's population is decreasing it means that it and and it's um and it's pre and the predator is increasing mm -hmm. it means that um they at the the prey is the prey is the one that's decreasing and the and the um predator is the one that's increasing and missing organism Missing um the line graph, miss. You can see that organism B is increasing while organism A is increasing, miss. So I would say that organism B is is um an example. I'll say organism B is eating organism A, which is causing its population to decrease, miss. Okay, I see what you're saying. Um, and I and I tend to agree. The only thing, though, um, um, did they say? I mean, <clears throat> these are not two organisms living, just the two of them, in the environment. So it's not ne it it's not necessarily. It doesn't stand necessarily to reason that it must be. Um, organism B that's eating A. You get what I'm saying? Yes, we could, yes. Just, we could just be observing this um, because we isolated the two of them, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's B that is eating A. More than likely, it is. Miss, most likely. Saying? Yeah, more than likely, it is. Because while B is increasing, A is decreasing. So more than likely is that we can't rule out that is another organism that is eating A. You understand what I'm saying? We just can't yes. rule out. But for all intents and purpose, um, Yes, we would say, uh, we would agree with the statement. Uh, so you said, do you agree? So you would say yes. And there is space below now. There's a box below for you to explain why you agree. And you would say, as Amari has been saying, um, there's a steady increase in the population in B, which would indicate that it is getting more food. The numbers are, are, are um, expanding. At the same time, there's a steady decrease in organism A, which would indicate that some predator is invading the species. And since we're presented with just the two organisms, we're assuming that it is B that is causing the decline in A and, and so on. So that wraps up the science paper. That wraps up the science paper. So we're roughly an hour in. Tomorrow we'll do two more papers. Um, two more performance task papers. On Monday we'll do two more. On Wednesday we'll do two more. On Tuesday we'll do two more. So ensure that you're well rested and that you log on early so we can complete our preparation for the performance task. All right, so get, go and get some rest now. I'll see you tomorrow at the same time. You could start a little early, like maybe six or after six months is possible. So look out for the early. Okay? Okay, miss. Bye. All right. Good night. Adios, miss. Adios, chica.
Bye, Miss.